welcome to another ballistics comparison video. This one is the 7mm08 versus a 6.5 Creedmoor at 1,000 yards. Let's go ahead and dive back in. Sorry it's been so long since I've done a video. If you have any questions or comments or requests, please post those below. And uh, let's get into this. So the recoil chart, it uh, doesn't have any data for the Creedmoor. But the 260 Remington is fairly similar. Uh, it's the 260, I think, has a little bit more power, uh, so it won't, but it won't be quite as high as this. It's actually fairly similar to the 7 mm 8 You can see 13 pounds of recoil with the 120, 11.9 with the 140 grain down here. You have 12.1 and 12.6 respectively for the 7 mm 8 Fairly similar recoil out of both of these. Now, commercial ammo, you're going to have a little bit more available for the Creedmoor actually mostly because Hornady designed the Creedmoor and they manufacture a lot of ammo for it. So you have a lot more Hornady ammo available from the factory for the Creedmoor than you do for the 7mm8. But I did find some other things, uh, some other ammo that's available that I could throw in here. Uh, 150 grain ELDX, if you're going to be hunting, this is one of the good rounds to use. Uh, 833 foot-pounds of energy at 1,000 yards, 297 inch drop. The 139 grain SST is also a decent one. Uh, it doesn't have the terminal performance that uh, the ELDX has. It, I've heard it uh, has more separation when it impacts. You have 722 foot-pounds and 282 drop. The reason why it drops less is because it is traveling faster from the gun when you first shoot it, but it doesn't have as high a ballistic coefficient as the 150 grain, so it slows down faster. 139 GMX, very similar. Down here, Nostler's Ballistic Tips, 637, 319, not the greatest performer at 1,000 yards. If you're using this one, you're probably hunting coyotes or something closer anyway. I wouldn't be shoot. Well, that would probably take a coyote at 1,000 yards. You'd probably be okay there, but I would recommend probably less than that. Uh, the E-Tip, uh, 673 foot-pounds, 304-inch drop. Uh, the Trophy Grade, grade Copper, if you are in California, which requires copper. They don't allow you to shoot lead bullets there. 645 foot-pounds, 317 inch drop. 160 grain Nossler AccuBond. This one is also a great one if you're going to be hunting elk. This would be a good choice here. 722 foot-pounds, 343. Notice it's not quite as good as this guy up here. I am a big fan of the new ELDX bullets. Down and then the Trophy Gold Ammunition. This is a burger hunting VLD bullet. 691 foot-pounds, 306 inch drop. So not too bad. Let's go ahead and move on to Creedmoor. So the 6.5 Creedmoor, 143 grain ELDX. This is a good hunting one. 815 foot-pounds, 304 inch drop. You can see just a little bit shy of the the 7mm08 with about 7 inch drop more. Pretty similar though. Uh, 147 grain, this is match only, and this is available from the factory. So if you're going to be shooting match and you don't want to reload, Creedmoor would be definitely be the choice to go because Hornady does load some excellent match bullets. This one, for instance, right here, really high BC on this one, 944 foot-pounds of energy at 1,000 yards, 1,701 feet per second, 289 drop. And moving forward, the ELD match right here, also a good match, 838 foot-pounds. 297 inch drop. SST, this one would be for smaller game. Uh, you probably could d take deer with it just fine. And then smaller game, I don't know if I'd take them out at 1,000 yards, but it's been done. Uh, the 661 foot pounds at 1,000 yards, 287 inch drop. 130 grind ELD match, another match bullet, 799 foot pounds of energy, 263 inch drop. So this one's a fairly flat shooting round right there. The 120 grain ELD match, 293, 596. So this one. I'd only use this one if the match requires a lighter bullet or if you would prefer less recoil. Then that'd be the one to go with. 120 grain GMX hunting round, 578, 304. It looks like I did not get the drop in there. I apologize for that. This American White Tail 520, this would be good for deer. I'd say out to 500 yards, maybe. Um, probably two to 300 would be better. And then the trophy grade long range, this is from Nossler, 816 foot-pounds, 49 inch drop, that's at 500 yards, so you're going to be about three times, four times that, probably more than that, five times. <laughs> it's going to be up probably pretty close to one of these right here. And that is that is a pretty good bullet for hunting right there. To the ballistic tip, 592, and then finally the open tip match, this is a match bullet, 733, it's basically a hollow point match bullet, uh, 315. So your average energy 1,000 yards is 6.5 Creedmoor inches above at 717, and it's because 
they have this awesome round right here. You take that one out, it's below, but that is a great match round. 7mm, 702.62 average. Hand loads. Uh, let's go to the ELDX hand loads. Create more 143 grain. 711 foot-pounds of energy. You'll notice that that is less than the factory round up here. And Hornady does that on purpose because they have special powders that they mix that they customize in the in-house and they don't broadcast those details. Same with the match bullet here. 840 foot-pounds of energy. Uh, I used the IMR Hogden's load data. It was the same recipe basically that Hornady had in my Hornady reloading book. 120 grain ELD match. This is a 486 BC, not great. 632 foot pounds of energy, and then down here, 669. So, if you're going to hand load the Hornady's, it would be better to buy them from the factory. The hand load recipes just aren't that great for them. And then, 7mm08 is a very different story. The 7mm08 shines with hand loads much better as you can see here 150 grand ELDX is 894 foot pounds of energy 279 inch drop of course these are max loads just keep that in mind these are the max loads you could uh, definitely be under this and there's a chance you could be over it as well depending on your gun and setup but uh, 894 my personal experience with my 24 inch 7 mm away is slightly higher than these on a slightly less than max load so mine performs slightly better than that uh, you compare that up here to the factory, 70 foot-pounds of energy more with significant less drop than the factory ammo there. Uh, 162 grain ELDX, this is what I loaded for my elk last year. You have 966 foot-pounds of energy at 1,000 yards with 295 inch drop. Very excellent there. And then this one is brand new. I have not loaded this one. You're really pushing the weight for a 7mm08, but it is available. Uh, 1,050 foot-pounds of energy. 309. So if you're really planning on just shooting way out there with a 7mm weight, I would probably hand load something like this. And then moving down, the 162 grain ELD match, 670 BC, 1030 foot pounds, 287 inch drop. The averages down here, this is where the separation comes and the 7mm weight really shines above the Creedmoor is in hand loads. You can see 775 foot pounds average. 1,029 foot-pounds average for the 7 mm weight. There's this big 180 grain I didn't mention there. Excellent energy, nice drop for such a big bullet for the 7 mm weight, but that's going to pound your shoulder. But that BC is pretty incredible, 796 ballistic coefficient there. Moving on to the Nossler load data. There's a good amount of load data for both guns, a little more for the 7 mm weight because it's been out longer. But uh, let's start 100 grain partition. This is not my top choice here the partition is the older style terminal performance is not great or i'm excuse me terminal performance is excellent but uh very low ballistic coefficient and getting out to the target it's just not very efficient you can see 250 on the most accurate 384 inch drop not great at all i i went ahead and included 200 yards here 515 2.7 uh, and then max loads 259, so only nine foot pounds more, 362 inch drop. Uh, just not a great bullet for long range hunting there. If you're close range, not too bad. It'd be good for deer if you want. If you're taking a youth out and you want less recoil, that'd be a good uh, good option right there. Coming down to custom competition, this one is not a hunting round. It is cut for competition, like it says, 528, 574 there, uh, and then 125 grain partitions 437 on the most accurate 473 on the max. Uh, the Acubon long range, this one is, uh, these are great bullets, the long range bullets. The Acubon replaced the partition uh, using modern bonding technique or technology to allow it to have a higher ballistic coefficient but still maintain the partition's ter terminal performance. Uh, so I would be hunting with an Acubon if I were using the Nostler bullets. This one 591 at 1,000 yards, 200 yards is 1790, 667 on the max load there. Uh, and then moving down to the Acubon 130 grain, 483 at 1,000 yards and 544 on the max at 1,000 yards. The 150 grain partition, 413, 591, you can see, a, or 491, excuse me, you can see it is lower than the Acubon, even though it is a heavier bullet. The, the ballistic coefficient is low. And then moving down to 140 grain, 520 there on the max, 
435 on the most accurate. Uh, this 130 grain actually outperforms it. You can see right there. Uh, and then 142 grain long range. This one, very high ballistic coefficient. This one would work very well for long range hunting. And then your 824 on the max, 763 or 673. I apologize on the shorter range. 7 mm weight, 140 grain, smallest partition available for it. You are 613 foot pounds of energy. Uh, and then the way Nossler, if you're not familiar with Nossler's low data, they use the same recipe for several bullets. So there will be some tweaking for individual bullets and individual rifles, of course, but the load data for the same weight bullet is the same. So here you can see a really good example of how the Acubon outperforms the partition. You have 727 foot-pounds of energy versus 613. Same size bullet, same recipe. The drop is also 22 inches less, so pretty good there. Uh, and then 150 grain partitions, 598 and 661. The 150 grain Acubon long range is 882 and 977. That's a decent long range hunting round right there. Uh, good high ballistic coefficient there. I think it's 611, I think is a ballistic coefficient. Uh, might be higher. I'll have to double check on that. And then 160 grain partition. The longer the bullet, the higher the ballistic coefficient. So these bigger partitions are getting a little better, but they're still a long ways off from the new uh, Acubons and the long range Acubons. So you can see here, this is a lighter bullet, but it has 300 foot pounds of energy more on the, most mo on the uh, max load. Uh, 160 grain Acubond, 811 there. You can see the difference. That's the same recipe again, like I mentioned before. The same white bullet uses the same recipe. And you can see the Acubond there outperforms it. Uh, the long range 150 grain outperforms both of them still. And then uh, the 175 grain, I jumped 168 grain uh, Acubond long range, 1031 on the max, 872. So you'll be somewhere in between there is a pretty safe bet. Uh, pretty good performing bullet, but again, that's going to kick you pretty good when you get this high. Same with these. I, I would probably avoid this one for most things just because it's not the most efficient bullet out there. 659, 748, and then uh, you have the 175 grain Acubond long range. 1019, 890. This is just pushing the uh, 7mm08 just a little too much on this right there. So. As you can see, I, the 168 grain is pretty good, and then this guy is pretty good too. I think this would be a good mix right here. Um, unless you just want the most energy possible, you can go with this guy. Moving down to the averages between the Creedmoor and the 7mm weight. 1,000 yards. The Creedmoor most accurate average was 483. Compare that to 724. You'll notice it's about 250 foot-pounds of energy average different between these two. And that's pretty consistent for hand loading regardless of the manufacturer of the bullet. Uh, for the Max, you're 544 for the Creedmoor and you're 819 for the 7mm08. So if you're going to be doing some long range, hunt, long range hunting, I would pick the 7mm08 over the Creedmoor and I did. I do own a 7mm08. I love that gun. Uh, and then uh, that, that I'm not saying the Creedmoor is bad. Sorry if you don't interpret it that way. The Creedmoor is an excellent round and it was designed for competition and it can be used as an efficient hunting round as well. It just doesn't have the same energy that the 7mm bullets do for the 7mm weight. And then 500 yards, I kept these in here. Average 1024, 1177 for the Creedmoor. For the 7mm weight, you're 1250 on the most accurate, 1389 on the, the uh, max there. And then moving down 200 yards, 618, 1830, 199, so almost 300 foot pounds. And then 2085, 250 foot pounds more there. So there you have it. That is the comparison between these two. It's not the end all be all, of course. There's lots of other things to compare. However, it should give you, if you're hunting or hand loading and you're trying to decide which one you want to do, that'll give you a good idea of what they're capable of. If you're hand loading, I would definitely pick the 7mm08 over the Creedmoor. Uh, if you're not planning on hand loading, you just want an excellent gun that you can just go buy ammo for, the Creedmoor is the way to go. Hope you like this comparison. Let me know if you do have any questions, comments below. Please subscribe. I'll continue to do these. I'm going to try and get at least one done every couple weeks, preferably once a week, but it, it might not go that way. But if you have any requests, just let me know. Thanks for watching.